Hey folks, Spike here with Heartbreaker Relics. The question that we get asked most often on all our video is, videos is how do we know where to dig? Well today, if you want to know how to know where to dig or how we know where to dig, just stay with us because not only are we going to show you how we know where to dig, we're going to do something, then we're going to show you what we find. So just stay with us and come on. First thing in any video where we're trying to share what we know about where to dig or how we decide where to dig are three things. The things that these people needed to live, they needed high level ground just out of the floodplain. They wanted ground that was flat and it needed to be out of the floodplain. And the other thing that they needed, it needed to be close to a water source. So we use a formula, high level ground just out of the floodplain plus a water source equals the possibility of artifacts. That means the possibility doesn't mean they're always going to be there, but that's where we start to look. As you can see here, this, the, the creek is back, it's about a hundred yards down in there and this whole area right here is flat but it drops off about 10 to 12 feet down into a bottom where years ago it was obviously the, uh, the creek channel ran through there. Uh, I say years, I'm talking thousands of years, three to five thousand years ago probably. But this was an ideal place for these people to live and this is what you'll be looking for. And uh, and once you find those three things, then you start digging test holes and looking for chips and flakes and tools and then points. But that's the first thing that needs to be said in any video where we're trying to share our information with you about where we decide to dig. This is an instructional video. Uh, we don't expect to come in and see 10, 10 or 15 points. We found some stuff. We found some cool stuff. You'll see that. But mainly we want to answer that question. You know, how do we know where to dig? And we're going to try to do that today uh, the best way we can. So uh, we're going to get off in these woods before it, before it drops off and see if we can dig and find some uh, flakes and maybe get him get on some points. So let's go. All right, Corey, we, we'll try digging on the edge of this, this field where this fence row is right here. You can see this, this field's been plowed for uh, oh, forever and ever, but this fence row was last killed maybe 20 years ago, 25 years ago. But this, this privet has encroached, and we've walked these fields after it's been dissed for years. So we dug through here, and uh, a few shovelfuls right there, and we found, we found uh, one little broke. Just the base off of one. But uh, no more flakes or anything because I said this has been picked. But Corey has gone up in the woods behind the privet in there and gonna clear us out of spot. He's gonna bring a five gallon bucket of sample dirt out here and we're gonna see we're gonna see what's in that and we'll know we'll we'll know whether to go up in there and dig or not. So y'all just hang with us. Uh, on that last, on, on that first sifter out of the woods, we didn't have any Native American artifacts, but we did find something really interesting, and I keep all of this stuff. We found, uh, there's uh, two pieces, well, that's another piece, I'm sure it goes with it, of uh, feather edge pottery. That's, uh, that's pretty civil, that's up to the Civil War. I keep all that stuff. I might come back here and do some metal detecting, but uh, right now, what we're doing, we're carrying this, uh, we're carrying the sifter. Uh, Corey has already carried it up in the woods. Let me show you where we're going, just try to keep you informed of what we're doing today cut us a path in here and the reason we're here because this this has never been hunted it had been disked back in here uh, or plowed a 
few yards, but back in here never has, and if you, you can't really tell, but it drops off right in there to that bottom. And we know that behind us, there's tons of arrowheads. You found anything? Just more of that pottery, more of that, more of that feather edge, uh, but no, no flakes or chips or anything. But we're gonna do some more here. They gotta be here. It's gotta be here because it's, it's out there. There's no reason in the world why it wouldn't be here. By the way, folks, privet hedges, invasive species. If they could get rid of all of them, these farmers would be tickled to death. All right. We'll show y'all the success we're having, actually the success that Matthew and Jonathan are having. We, you can see that there's the privet line out there. What we were trying to find was the old fence row. I don't know if you can see it. There's a red post right through there. We know that this hadn't been plowed back here. This has never been disked. On the other side of that, it has at one time. So we've, we at one time, that was pasture, and we walked that for 30 years and picked up. But they got out just outside this, this fence here where the ground is still flat. You see, it, it's, it, I don't know if you can sell, tell on the camera, but it's flat. But it drops off right there drops off down into the bottom. Now the creek's about a hundred yards, but three, five thousand years ago, the creek was probably down in there. But they have, hey, we've, we've been finding a flake here and there, and they're finally into something. Um, uh, first, let me show you what they've done. They're sifters. Look what, uh, Matthew, how long did it take you to put that together? Yeah, about an hour. About an hour, out of scrap material, yeah? Yeah, Look. I was on a, uh, had a carpentry project going on at my house, and uh, they already had the saws and all set up, and uh, I just pulled this lumber out of the scrap pile. That's pretty yeah. cool, man. Look, look, look how he did his stops, y'all, because Matthew's notorious for not putting a stop on one. And uh, I added, you know, where it wasn't necessary for strength. I'd drill yeah. some holes in it just to take extra weight it's off of it. Stop here, and he put braces on his legs because he just don't break down like ours do, but that just shows... He even drilled some holes in it for lightering. Made one for Jonathan. What a yeah. pal. But look, look. I made him some uh, pretty skinny legs on the back of his. That's all I had. Oh. And they're working out real good. It's yeah. And lighter. And one, one edge, one end is longer than the other, huh? Yeah, it's just one by twos. I mean, oh, man, that's cool. I can't argue with the success y'all having because they finally, they finally got into some, some stuff back here. They hadn't been digging long. They got a couple of small holes. Think you need a uh, petition in the middle of this? Uh, it, that's hold that. Uh, it's holding up without it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh? I mean, you don't. It, it, that's just going to impede your sifting. Yeah. All right. Well, look at what they've they've got. Uh, not many flakes. Now you saw this base and you saw the feather edge, but these are all this little tools and uh, stuff that they've uh, that they've got out of these holes in. So that that tells you. When you're sifting and you're finding that, you know you're in the right spot. You just keep looking. That's all. And uh, they did good. Y'all did good, guys. <laughs> well, now we're going to dig and see if we can find, see what else we can find. What other kind of artifacts, maybe some points. And we'll get back if we do. All right, we just took a little break. We had some lunch. And still finding some chips and flakes. We finally, Jonathan and Matthews got us on this site. We came back. We hadn't even, Jonathan was chipping in his hole and he said, look at here, here's a point. And look here, he just, he just threw it up in the sifter. I'm going to tell you what, that base, I'm like Matthew now. It's like St. Well, it looks like a, if that's a, if that's a chisel tip, Matthew, Come look at it and tell me you didn't th think that that might be a St. Helena. Look at the heavy, heavy. Go ahead and pick it up, Jonathan. Let's look at it up close and see. Is that tip made or like that? 
No, it's broke it's like that. Chip. Man, that is that is that is a fine little point, boy. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Bump. Y'all go stand around and talk. And I'll find another one. <laughs> yeah, but the thing, we took you from, well, we did, look, we cheated a little bit because we knew that there was a site out in that field. And we knew we, we would hope we could get up here on the other side of this fence and find where it was. Then we went, we dug 100 yards down that fence row and, uh, and, never, and never found anything until... They came up in here and got on this spot, and it looks like it's going to run probably 40, 50 yards up through here. So that is how you, that, that's what you do. The, the same thing still applies. High level ground just out of the floodplain next to a water source and dig, dig your uh, test holes high. We've probably moved four or five yards of dirt today before we ever got on something. Yeah, we just got our first piece of pottery. Corey found it in the sifter. Yeah, a little looks like little cord wrap stuff, but about the same time, oh, Matthew said, "You got a point." Oh, it is Matthew. It is. It's like a little Collins. Little Collins, what it looks like. Is that broke that on the end? Water. Uh, yeah. Oh, y'all see how? Oh, excuse me, y'all. Do y'all see how little it is? Wow. Put your finger there so you can see. I think it's broke on the end, Matthew. I think it's a drill on the back side. It may be. My trigger don't work? Yeah, ain't got no trigger. Oh. Well, yeah, it a, may be a broke drill. Oh, a broke drill. Doggone it, but still. It'll go in the case good. It's an artifact, yeah. And and, and, and it, it just it just adds one more to we we here on the we're what just, we were looking for. We started out looking for this this morning to dig and we found it. You yeah, it looks like notches. Looks like it's been re-notched, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, something. That's what threw me off. You can see it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm it's glad good you enough found for, one this year. Yeah, it's good enough for spikes, Kate. <laughs> Heck yeah, you doggone right, and congratulations. <laughs> Boom. All right. Y'all stay with us. We're going to dig some more. All right, we, gave, we, we stopped where we were digging back there. We were finding a few flakes and chips, but it wasn't enough to... And I said it wasn't enough to make me want to come back. And Matthew and Jonathan, they're pretty persistent. They said, we're going to go about 100, 150 yards on down the ridge here. And they found this spot here. Yeah, maybe further than 150, huh? But, it's, but this, is, this is typical textbook. Look, that, see how it, I don't know if you can see how it runs out and then drops right off down into where the old, old creek was. This is out of this is out of the floodplain. It's level, and they've been digging and finding flakes in every in every uh, sifter full. And ja, while we're gone, Matthew threw a, a knife up and what beautiful ads. I mean, where's it at? Right there in the chair. Uh, up in my chair, none. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nice little ads. I mean, it's that's cool as it can be right there, man. That's nice, and uh, they called us over here. We filled our hole in and came on back, and Corey's starting us another one over there. But this is this is what we tell you: high level ground just out of the floodplain, and dig. It don't mean you're going to find it. It just means that there's a possibility it's there. That's what they needed to live, and this stuff is not easy. Let's see what else we can find. I hope that helps y'all some. Matthew was uh, looking at, at the, the tool he found. I call it a little adz, and we was talking about how it would have been used or how it would have been hafted. And uh, I'm gonna, if, if I can, while I'm here in just a few minutes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut a stick. What I think it would have looked like. Of course, it's, I've seen pictures of them too. You want it? Right, let me get this cut first, and then. Uh, I'll show y'all, and then uh, you might can get an idea what what it was, how it was used. Uh, it would have been like this. They would have had a a notch here. <laughs> Of 
course, they probably wouldn't have had a Dewalt. Yeah, they'd have probably had Cobalt. All right, that. Strictly for informational purposes. handle probably wouldn't have been as thick, but this would have been the general idea. And where's your, uh, where's your ads at, Matthew? A lot of these ads we find like this will be broken off flat here, but they would have fit up against up in here and halved it in with the working edge down here, like this. You see? And that would have been hafted in with sinew and, and pitch and whatever. And when they wanted to scrape a hide or something with it, they got their handle. And it was like, do you get an idea? Can you see? That? That's, that's the general, I think, general consensus of what those were, were used for. Anyway, it's a cool little tool. We, want, we get that question asked all the time, and we, we just wanted to share that with y'all. And we hope this helps. And uh, it, uh, if it does, if you like this, hit that like button down there. If you hadn't already subscribed, if you want to, that'd be fine, too. And just right down below, there's a link to our store, if, uh, uh, our, our merchandise and stuff. And thank all of you for your support, and uh, we'll catch y'all on the next one.